Hello, and welcome to the DLA Law Enforcement Support Office training course, designed as an introductory training for new users and as a refresher for current users. My name is Carlos Torres. I am the program manager for the Defense Logistics Agency Law Enforcement Support Office, commonly referred to as the 1033 program or the LESO program. This course is designed to give you an understanding of the background of the program, as well as some insight into what kind of property is available and the requirements for requesting and accounting for excess Department of Defense property. We'll begin with a quick explanation of the LESO program's beginnings and how it has morphed into program that is being run today. The Law Enforcement Support Office facilitates a program that evolved from the National Defense Authorization Acts of fiscal years 1991 and 1997, authorizing the Secretary of Defense to transfer excess Department of Defense property to eligible law enforcement agencies across the U.S. and its territories. This was codified into, into law 10 U.S. Code 2576 Alpha. Each state has a governor-appointed state coordinator who is responsible for the managing the, pro the LESO program for their individual states. That person or his, her designee is your primary point of contact for any matters regarding the LESO program. Currently, all 50 states and three U.S. territories, to include the District of Columbia, participate in the program. The LESO program is managed by the Defense Logistics Agency, specifically DLA Disposition Services in Battle Creek, Michigan. The program office is responsible for enrollment of law enforcement agencies, review and request for property, the tracking of property issued, and compliance. All of these topics will be covered throughout the training modules. Please take the time to go through this course as it provides important information on how to get enrolled, how to acquire equipment, and most importantly, it covers accountability and compliance requirements for the property after it has been received. Throughout the course, the term LEA is used when referencing a law enforcement agency, and the term property is the same as the terms equipment and items. I want to thank you for taking the training course. It will serve as a guide and will answer most of your questions you may have regarding the DLA LESO program. Thanks again and good luck. Module 1, Topic 2. Before we get too deep into the weeds, we'd like to provide a general overview of the LESO program and how it works. The military services, the Marines, Navy, Army, and Air Force, use DLA disposition services to turn in their excess property to be properly disposed. Once that property is turned in to DLA disposition services, it gets sorted and, if appropriate, is put on record to be reutilized by another military service or by one of the several reutilization, transfer, or donation customers, also known as RTD customers, LESO being one of them. Once the property is brought on record, it stays available to those various customers for up to 42 days, known as the RTD screening cycle. It is during this time that LESO customers have a chance to submit an electronic requisition for this property in a system called the RTD web. That request is then sent electronically to the state coordinator and, if approved by the state coordinator, is electronically sent to the LESO customer support team for a final review and processing. If the property is awarded to the requesting LEA, shipping and transportation arrangements need to be made with the DLA disposition services site where the property is located. The property needs to be picked up within 14 days of being awarded to the LEA. Module 1, Topic 3. One of the many tools available to LESO customers is the LESO website, which serves as a one-stop shop for customers. To access the website, you can do a web search for DLA LESO or type the following address into your internet browser as it's displayed on the screen. The LESO website gives the user access to contact information for their state coordinator, contact information for a DLA disposition services site, and additional guidance and training on the LESO program. Select Contact Disposition Services and choose Find a Location to pull up the contact information for any of our DLA disposition services sites. Select Find My State Coordinator 
to pull up the contact information for the state coordinator and any state points of contact in your state. Select Forms if you would like to access commonly used LESO forms. The user will have access to the LESO application for participation, aircraft, armored vehicle, small arms request and justification forms, ATF forms for small arms, and property accounting forms, including the DD-200 form for property adjustments and the equipment custody receipt. The LESO website also has access to the RTD Web and FETNESS, which serves as the inventory management system for LESO. More on that later. Select Property Search if you would like to access the RTD Web to request property. Or select FETNESS Logon if you would like to access the inventory system to receipt, transfer, or turn in property. Select Training and Instruction to access additional guidance concerning LESO program functions and commonly reported issues. Module 2, Topic 1. Before LESO will allow any LEA within a specific state to participate in the program, the state is required to read, understand, and sign the Memorandum of Agreement, also referred to as the MOA, between the state and DLA Disposition Services Law Enforcement Support Office. No property will be issued to any LEA within that state until the document is signed. After the state has read and signed the MOA, each LEA within that state that wants to participate in the LESO program is required to read, understand, and sign the approved State Plan of Operation, also referred to as the SPO, for their state. The signature required on the SPO is from the Chief Law Enforcement Official at that LEA, generally the Chief or the Sheriff. The State Plan of Operation, much like the MOA that the state signs with LESO, is an agreement between the State Coordinator's Office and the Law Enforcement Agency that outlines the LESO program rules and policies. It is important that every participating LEA has read and understands this State Plan of Operation, so be sure to read the entire document and feel free to reach out to your State Coordinator's Office if you need any clarification. As previously stated, the State Plan of Operation outlines the LESO program rules and policies and clarifies the roles and responsibilities of the LESO, the State, and the LEA. We would like to take a moment to highlight a few topics from the State Plan of Operation and emphasize their importance when attempting to operate within the guidelines of the LESO program. Controlled property includes any property that has a demilitarization code, or DEMIL code, other than A or Q6. For example, DEMO codes B, C, D, E, F, G, and Q3 are all considered controlled property. It is important to understand that controlled property cannot be obtained for the purpose of sale, lease, loan, personal use, rent, exchange, barter, transfer, or to secure a loan. The property is conditionally transferred to the awarded LEA, but title and ownership of controlled property will remain with LESO and will not be relinquished to the states or LEAs. It is the property of the Defense Logistics Agency and remains the property of DLA for the duration of its life. If your LEA no longer has a use for these items, you must contact your state coordinator and begin the turn-in process. Another section of the State Plan of Operation that we'd like to highlight is the portion dealing with Program Compliance Reviews. LESO conducts a Program Compliance Review, or a PCR, for each state that is enrolled in the LESO program every two years, while also reserving the right to require a PCR on a more frequent basis if necessary. 
These compliance reviews are conducted in order to ensure that state coordinators, SPOCs, and all LEAs within a state are compliant with the terms and conditions of the program. The LESO will give the state a 60-day notification, which includes the specific LEAs that will be visited during the compliance review. The LESO will also give the state a 21-day notification, which includes the specific pieces of property that have been selected for review. While conducting the PCR at each LEA, it is LESO's intent to physically review 100% of all small arms, armored vehicles, and aircraft, as well as a minimum of 10% of each LEA's general property. In addition to the selected property being reviewed, an LEA can also expect the LESO to verify the state plan of operation is signed by the correct parties, that any controlled equipment is being stored in a safe and secure area, and to answer any questions the LEA may have concerning the program. If any LEA is not compliant with the terms and conditions of the program, they can be suspended or terminated on the spot by the state or by LESO. Also, if it is found that a state is not compliant with the terms and conditions as a result of the PCR, the entire state can be suspended from the program, resulting in the denial of all future requests for property from the state until the suspension is lifted. It is imperative that every LESO program participant has read and understands the content of the state plan of operation. Other sections covered are the general terms and conditions, the annual inventory requirement, reporting requirements for lost, missing, stolen, and damaged property, information about aircraft and small arms, records management requirements, and the property allocation process. If at any point you have a question about your state plan of operation, please reach out to your state coordinator for clarification. Module 2, Topic 2. In addition to understanding and signing the state plan of operation, each LEA must also submit an application for participation to their state coordinator's office. As previously stated, the application for participation can be accessed through the LESA website under the Forms section. The first step in LESO's review process is to determine whether or not the LEA is eligible for participation. In order to participate, an LEA must be a governmental agency whose primary function is the enforcement of applicable federal, state, and local laws, and whose compensated law enforcement officers have the powers of arrest and apprehension. This means that fire departments, prisons, and private railroad companies, among others, are not eligible to participate in the LESO program. The state coordinator's office is responsible for ensuring that only applications from authorized LEAs are sent to the LESO for reviewing and processing. If it is determined that the LEA is eligible to participate, the LESO will review the information on the application and process accordingly. Here are some tips on filling out your application correctly to avoid being denied or delayed due to research. The ORI number. ORI stands for the Originating Agency Identifier. Most LEAs already have an ORI number assigned by the FBI. An LEA uses their ORI number to submit reports and fingerprint requests, among other actions, in the National Crime Information Center, NCIC, databases. LESO will use the information associated with an LEA's ORI number to assist with the application validation process. The DODAC section. DODAC stands for Department of Defense Activity Address Code and is used to uniquely identify a Department of Defense unit, activity, or organization that has the authority to requisition property. Upon the approval of their application for participation, every LEA is assigned a six-digit DODAC made up of alphanumeric characters, all of which begin with 2YT. The agency's name and physical address. Please provide the complete agency name, 
and a physical address. P.O. boxes are not accepted. The full and part-time officer count. An LEA's officer count determines the allocation limit for property. Generally, the lesso will issue on a one-to-one -one ratio, one item for every one officer. LEAs must have at least one full-time officer to participate in the program. The lesso counts full-time and part-time officers, but reserves, volunteers, or any other uncompensated officers will not count towards the LEA's officer count. RTD screeners. The RTD screeners listed must be employed by the LEA submitting the application. The individuals identified on the application as RTD screeners will be permitted to request access to the system and act as an authorized RTD screener on behalf of their LEA. Please be sure to use only full legal names, no initials, no nicknames, and the names listed as RTD screeners should match the names used during the account creation process. If an individual is not listed as an RTD screener on the latest application submitted by an LEA, any current access will be removed and any future request for access from that individual will be denied. As a note, we want to be very clear that users should put their full legal name when listing themselves as an RTD screener. LEA certifications. In this section of the application, LEAs are required to certify that they meet the provided definition of a law enforcement agency, that the signer is either the CLEO or holds a position at the LEA that authorizes them to sign on behalf of the CLEO, and that they agree to comply with 10 U.S. Code 2576 Alpha. Signatures. The chief law enforcement official generally the chief or sheriff, must sign the application for participation before sending it to the state coordinator for review and processing. LESO also accepts signatures from individuals employed by the LEA that hold a position that authorizes them to sign on behalf of the CLEO. The signer is certifying under penalty of perjury that all of the information is accurate and correct because making a false statement on the application may result in judicial actions or prosecution. Once the application is completely filled out and signed by the chief law enforcement official, the LEA sends it to their state coordinator for review and processing. Module 2, Topic 3. Once an LEA is approved to participate in the LESO program, the individuals approved to operate as RTD screeners and or the inventory POCs will need to create user accounts in the appropriate systems used by the LESO. For individuals that will be operating as the RTD screeners responsible for submitting property requests, accounts will need to be established in AMPS and the RTD web. The first system you will need to create an account for is the Account Management and Provisioning System, referred to as AMPS. AMPS serves as a parent system and is used to request permission to access the child systems. The only child system that LESO customers need access to is the RTD web. In your internet browser, you can do a web search for DLA AMPS and get to the web page by selecting the option for AMPS splash screen, or you can type in the actual web address as it appears on your screen. Once you are at the AMPS web page, select click here for access to AMPS on the left hand side. Once you read the authentication message, select OK at the bottom. As a new user, you will want to select first time user, click here to register. On the AMPS user registration page, select I am a member of the public. After reading the Privacy Act statement, select Accept. On the user information screen, input all of the required information. 
for the phone number, the system wants the numeric digits separated by periods, not dashes. Once all of the required information is input, select Next in the upper right corner. On the Security Information page, the user will need to select and answer the security questions as well as create their password. The password requirements are listed on the right side of the screen and must include at least 15 characters, four alphabetic characters, two uppercase, two lowercase, two numeric characters, and two special characters. You will use this password for both AMPS and RTD. Once the security questions are set and the password has been established, select Next in the upper right-hand corner. On the Registration Summary page, the system will display all of the information you have input during the account creation process. If all of the information is correct, select Create Account in the upper right corner. If the information is not correct, select Back to go back to the previous screens and edit the information. The next screen that is displayed will be the Registration Confirmation page. This page shows the user's newly assigned login name. The password you set and this username that is assigned in AMPS will be the same information you will use to log into the RTD web to request property. After you have the username written down or memorized, select Login to AMPS to log back into the system and submit your request to access the RTD web. Select the Click Here for Access to AMPS to get back into the login screen. This time, instead of selecting First Time User, just put in the newly created username and password, then select Login. You should now see the AMPS User Home screen. On the left-hand side, select Request Role. After reading the Privacy Act statement that is displayed, select Accept to proceed. The next screen that is displayed will be a User Information Summary page. If all of the information is accurate, select Next in the upper right corner. If the information is not correct, make the necessary updates, then select Next to proceed. On the next screen, select DLA Enterprise Applications in the top left box. This will display new options in the bottom box where you select a role. Select DLA Disposition Prod RTD Customer DDS 413 so that it is highlighted. Use the arrow key to move it to the box on the right, then select Next in the upper right corner. On the following screen, you will be required to submit a justification. An easy justification example would be, user is a new LESO customer. Enter your justification, then select Next in the upper right corner. The next screen will be a role request summary page. Make sure to review what role is being requested to verify that it is the correct role. If everything is accurate, select Submit in the upper right corner. If the information needs to be changed, select Back to return to the previous screens to make the necessary edits. To perform a password change or reset, log into AMPS using your previously assigned username and password. This will take you to your user home screen. If you are not able to log into AMPS, call the Enterprise Help Desk at 855-352-0001 for assistance with the password reset process. Assuming you are able to log into AMPS, select My Information on the left-hand side. On the User Information screen, select Change Password in the upper right corner. Input your old password in the first line, and put your new password in the next two lines. New passwords must follow the same requirements as the original password. At least 15 characters, 4 alphabetic characters, 2 uppercase, 2 lowercase, 2 numeric characters, and 2 special characters. After the information is input, click OK to submit the password change. 
At this point, you have created your account for AMPS and you logged in and requested permission to access the next system, the RTD Web. From here, you will need to wait for two emails. The first email will notify you that your account has been created and your role request has been submitted. The second email will notify you that the role you requested has been provisioned to your account. You cannot log into the RTD Web until you get that second email stating that your RTD role has been provisioned. Once you get that email, you can log into RTD and begin the account creation process for that system. If you need assistance with the AMPS account creation process, there are guides and instructions available on the LESO website under the Training and Instructions section. Also, please feel free to reach out to your state coordinator for any additional guidance. Module 2, Topic 4. As previously stated, the RTD Web is the system used to submit requests for excess military property through the LESO program. While in RTD, the user will need to request a role that will give them permission to act as a property screener on behalf of their LEA. As a reminder, only users identified on the latest version of the application for participation will be approved to receive a property screener role. There are several methods that can be used to access the RTD web. The most commonly used method would be to visit the LESO webpage and select property search. Another option would be to do a web search for DLA Enterprise Business Portal. Another option would be to type the following web address into your internet browser as it appears on your screen. Whichever method you use, to access the RTD site, you will be taken to the DLA webpage. Select the big yellow button, Registered Users Log In Here, on the left, or click on the DLA Enterprise External Business Portal option. After reading the Use and Consent message, select the I Accept button. This will take you to a page where you will be prompted to input your username and password. Reminder, this will be the same username and password that you created in AMPS. Put in the required information and select Log On. The user is now directed to a page where they will need to select the tab titled Disposition Services. This will refresh the page and should now display an option for RTD in the detailed navigation column on the left hand side. Select the RTD option to proceed to the RTD web. Selecting RTD will open a new internet window that will take the user to the actual RTD web. On the left hand side, in the blue bar that runs top to bottom, select Request Role. This will direct the user to an RTD pre-register page. In the top drop-down, Application, select Law Enforcement Support Office. In the bottom drop-down, Role, select LESO State and Local Screener, then select Submit. The user will be directed to an RTD Customer Registration page, where they will input all of the required information. The top half of the page will be Personal Information. The address being input should be the same physical address for the LEA that is listed on the application for participation that was submitted. The bottom half of the page will be information about the LEA. The number of officers should match what was submitted on the application for participation. In the Level drop-down, select Screener. If all of the information is accurate and correct, select Submit at the bottom of the page. That role request will now be sent electronically to the state coordinator for review and approval. If approved, the role request will then be sent to LESO for final review and approval. If the role request is approved by LESO, the user should receive a system-generated email notifying them of the approval. If you need any assistance with the RTD Web role request process, 
There is a guide available in the training and instruction section of the LESA website. If you need additional guidance, please feel free to reach out to your state coordinator. Module 2, Topic 5. Before an LEA is able to receive property through the LESO program, they also need to have a user create an account and manage the LEA's property book in the inventory system, the Federal Excess Property Management Information System, commonly referred to as FETMIS or FAMWEB. There are several methods that can be used to access FETMIS. The most commonly used method being to visit the LESO webpage and select FETMIS Logon. Another option would be to do a web search for LESO FETMIS and another option would be to type the following web address into your internet browser as it appears on your screen. Whichever method you use, you will be directed to the FETMIS homepage. On the FETMIS homepage, the user will select FAMWEB Logon Request in the gold bar on the left-hand side that runs from top to bottom. Be sure not to select FAMTEST. After selecting FAMWEB Logon Request, the user will be taken to a user creation page and will need to input all of the required information on the page. LESO suggests using the same username that was assigned to the user in AMPS. However, the password requirements are different, so the user will need to create a new password that meets all of the FETMIS password requirements. At least 12 characters, but no more than 14, at least one number, one special character, one uppercase letter, and one lowercase letter. The password requirements are listed at the top of the user creation page. As a note, the unit slash agency field can be left blank, and the address should match the physical address that was submitted on the application for participation. Once all of the required fields are filled out, the user will need to select the Law Enforcement FETMIS Access at the bottom of the page and submit a justification in the comment box that they are a new LESO customer. Then select Add. At this point, the account creation request has been submitted in the system. However, the user needs to contact their state coordinator to notify them of the request. The state coordinator is responsible for assigning that user's account to the correct LEA, as well as assigning that user the necessary roles required to perform inventory functions in FETMIS. Once the state coordinator has assigned that user to their LEA and has granted them the correct roles, the user will now be able to log into FETMIS and receipt for, transfer, or turn in property, as well as review any property book information that is available in the system. Details on these functions will be discussed in a later module. If additional guidance is required concerning the FETMIS account creation process, the user can reach out to their state coordinator for assistance. If the user needs to perform a password reset, they can reach out to the FETMIS help desk at 866-224-7600 and then option number four. Module three, topic one. At this point in the process, the user has created their AMPS account, requested and received the roles that grant them access to the RTD web, requested and received the roles that allow them to search for property in the RTD system, and created an account in the FETMIS inventory system. The users are now able to request property on behalf of their LEA. As outlined in the Memorandum of Agreement between LESO and the State and the State Plan of Operation Agreement between the State and the LEA, property made available through the LESO program is for the use of authorized program participants only. Property may not be obtained for any individual, organization, or LEA that has not been approved as a participant in the LESO program. 
Also, property must not be obtained by any authorized participant for the purpose of sale, lease, loan, personal use, rent, exchange, barter, transfer, or to secure a loan. All requests for property must be based on a bona fide law enforcement requirement or need. To search for and submit a request for property, the user needs to navigate to the RTD web using one of the previously discussed methods and log in. The user needs to hover over the Law Enforcement Support Office option in the blue bar on the left running from top to bottom. Hovering over that option will display a pop-out box where the user will select Lesso Search. The user will now be at the Lesso Search page where they will identify the search criteria they would like to use to find property. There are a number of pieces of information the user could use to find an item, such as the national stock number, the federal supply class, the item name, the DTID, the condition code, the screening cycle, the DLA disposition services location, property that's located a certain mile from the DODAC location, or property that's located within a certain radius of the zip code. Note, the user can use multiple criteria at the same time. If the user only wants to look at Federal Supply Class 6515 medical items that are located specifically at DLA Disposition Services Bragg, they can limit the search to only display items that meet those specific criteria, reducing the number of items that are displayed and ultimately reducing the time spent by the user sorting through the list of items. Once the user has designated the search criteria they would like to use, select Search at the bottom of the page. If the user would like to remove all selected criteria and start over, select Clear Search Criteria instead. After pressing search, the user will be taken to a screen that shows the results of the search criteria specified. On this page, each piece of property, sometimes grouped together on the same document number, will have a multitude of information displayed. The condition code, the item name, and the DTID the DLA Disposition Services site where the property is located, the national stock number for that piece of property, the DMIL code for that specific piece of property, and any photographs if they were available. As a note, if you would like more information about condition codes, you can select the condition code and it will display an explanation of what each code means. Same with the DMIL code and the screening cycles. If you would like to access the DLA Disposition Services site contact information, click on the site name and you will be taken to the contact information page for that specific location. The RTD system operates much like an online shopping website where you can add items to your cart and then check out when finished browsing. To add an item to your cart, click on the shopping cart icon in the bottom left corner of the line item. When the user adds an item to their cart, they are taken to a screen where they are required to specify the quantity they are requesting and submit a justification explaining the need and use of the item. To note, there are specific requirements that each justification must meet. First, the justification must explain that the property is for use by the requesting LEA, not being requested to be transferred, sold, bartered, or donated to another entity. Secondly, the justification must explain that the property is for a law enforcement use or purpose, not for use on personal projects or for use by other entities. 
LEAs must provide specific examples of how the property will be used for law enforcement purposes. Lastly, the justification must be persuasive, meaning that the specified use needs to match the item. As an example, the user cannot tell us that they want to use a field medical kit to clean a patrol car. The use has to match the capabilities of the item. Once the user has identified the quantity and entered a valid justification, select Save to Cart to officially add the item to your cart. When all of the items the user would like to request are added to the cart, the user selects Check Out to actually submit those requests electronically to their state coordinator for review and processing. If approved, the user will see the request status update on their RTD home screen and should receive an email from the system notifying them that they were awarded the property. If the property is awarded to the requesting LEA, shipping and transportation arrangements need to be made with the DLA Disposition Services site where the property is located. The property needs to be picked up within 14 days of being awarded to the LEA. The user will be required to provide a letter of authorization to remove or an LOAR, which authorizes a person or commercial carrier to pick up the property. The LOAR can be acquired from the DLA Disposition Services site. The user can get the DLA Disposition Services contact information from the LESO website under the Contact Disposition Services section. Sometimes, after the user specifies the search criteria they would like to use, there are no items available that match that criteria. Instead of having to come back to the system and run the search on a daily basis to check availability, the user can set up a want list by selecting the Schedule button. The user is given the option to set the format and frequency of this automatic search performed by the system. The system will run the search as regularly as specified and will email the user the search results, reducing the amount of time the user has to spend searching for property in the system. Now that we know how to run the search, let's take a quick look at some of the property that is available through the LESO program. Most folks familiar with the LESO program already know that eligible law enforcement agencies have access to small arms, aircraft, helicopters, watercraft, and tactical vehicles but LEAs also have access to generators, hand and power tools, communication equipment, gloves, boots, ballistic goggles, optics for small arms, office equipment including printers, computers, monitors, photographic equipment, officer gear and backpacks, first aid kits and other medical equipment, gun cases, laptops, and much, much more. Module 4, Topic 1 When an LEA is awarded property through the LESO program, the information is pushed electronically from the DLA Disposition Services site inventory system to the LESO inventory system, FETNESS. Once that property information is pushed to FETNESS, the LEA has 30 days to submit a receipt for that property. A property receipt is performed to certify that the LEA did in fact receive the requested property and is not dependent on the condition of the property when received. If an LEA receives a piece of property that does not work, they still need a receipt for that property in FETNESS because they did receive it, it just doesn't work. The FETMIS inventory system can be accessed by selecting FETMIS Logon in the LESO website, by doing a web search for LESO FETMIS, or by typing the following address into your internet browser as it appears on your screen. In order to perform any function in the FETMIS inventory system, the LEA POC will need to log into the system by selecting Log On in the bottom left corner of the Fire and Aviation Management Web, FAMWeb, homepage. This will open a pop-up window where the user will be required to input their username and password, then press Log On. The user will be taken back to the FAMWeb homepage where they will select Lesso Fetmas on the left-hand side. 
in the gold bar that runs top to bottom. By selecting Leso Fetmus, a new window will open with the actual Fetmus website displayed. To receipt for a piece of property, select Receipts on the left-hand side to open the receipt queue. In the receipt queue, all of the property still awaiting receipt will be displayed. Select the requisition number, which is highlighted in blue, for the line of property to be receipted. The user will be taken to a screen where they will be prompted to input the quantity that they actually received. Click on the receipt button. The user will now be required to identify the property and quantity they just specified. Select Identify to do so. The user is now taken to a Receipt Summary screen, where the user has a final chance to review the information. If all the information is accurate, select Identify Property. This prompts the system to generate a property number that is assigned to the receipted property. The user is taken to the Identify Tracked Property screen that displays the information for the property. The property number, the DTID, item name, national stock number, quantity, assigned station, and more. If the property requires a photo or serial number, the system will not allow the user to proceed until the required information is provided. To input a serial number, Put your cursor in the serial number field and input the information. To upload a photo, select the Manage Images option at the top of the screen. In the Image Content drop-down, select the type of photo that is being uploaded. Select Browse to search through your computer and select the file. Select Upload to upload the photo against the specific property number. After the appropriate photo or photos have been uploaded, select Identify to navigate back to the Identify Tracked Property screen to complete the receipt. If it is an accurate statement, select the Certification comment box. The user is given one final chance to review the information on the Receipt Property Breakdown screen. If all of the information is accurate, select Submit. The receipt is then electronically sent to the State Coordinator for review and processing, then eventually, if approved by the State, is sent to LESO for the final review and processing. As a note, if an LEA does not receive the quantity that the system says they should have received, they identify the true quantity actually received during the receipt process, which will push the receipt to a zero or partial receipt queue in FETNESS. LESO will reach out to the LEA POC or the DLA Disposition Services site for supporting documentation to validate that the LEA only received a partial or zero quantity. If at any point additional assistance is required, there is a guide available in the Training and Instructions section of the LESO website that will provide instructions on how to receipt for property. Also, users can reach out to their state coordinator if they still have questions about the receipt process. Module 4, Topic 2. The Modify function in FETMIS is used to transfer property to another participating LEA or to change any piece of information about a specific item, whether that be the serial number, the NSN, the physical storage location, or any other eligible piece of information. To perform a modification to property information, Select the Modify option in the menu on the left. The user will be taken to a property search screen where they can use any of the information fields available to them to find the specific piece of property they want to modify. Or, if they simply make sure the state, division, subdivision, and station fields are filled out, they can open their entire property book to search for the item. 
Once a search field is filled out, or if you decide to pull the LEA's entire property book, select Submit. Depending on what search criteria the user specified, the system will either display that individual piece of property or the entire property book for that LEA. Locate the property you would like to modify and select the requisition number, highlighted in blue. The user will now be taken to a property information page where they can edit an information field, manage images, or split the property from an individual property line into multiple property lines with specified quantities. If the information field has an asterisk next to it, the requested change is electronically sent to the LESO for approval before being implemented in the system. To transfer an item to another eligible LEA within your state, simply use the Station drop-down and select the specific LEA to whom you would like to transfer the property. If the LEA intended to receive the property is located in another state, LESO will submit the transfer request on behalf of the sending LEA. After selecting the intended recipient, press Submit at the bottom of the screen. The user is now required to provide the shipping information for the transfer. This includes the contact name and primary phone number for the receiving LEA, as well as the physical address. Press Submit at the bottom to electronically send the transfer request to your state coordinator for review and processing. No transfer of property can take place without receiving LESO approval prior to the physical transfer. LEAs must submit their transfer requests in FETNIS, receive state and LESO approval, and be provided with the 1348 transfer document before the physical transfer can take place. If your LEA needs additional guidance concerning the transfer process, there is an instructional guide available on the LESO website under the Training and Instructions section. If your LEA needs guidance on how to transfer LESO small arms, please contact your state coordinator for specific instructions. The LESO small arms transfer process is complex in nature, but instructions on how to perform the transfer function can be found in the Forms section of the LESO website. Module 4, Topic 3. The change of status function in FETMIS is used to turn property back into DLA disposition services, but can also be used to make a property adjustment on the LEA's property book, whether that be due to the item being lost, missing, stolen, destroyed, or consumed. To turn in property or to make a property adjustment to an LEA's property book, the user submits a change of status request in the FETMIS system. To do this, select the change of status option in the menu on the left. The user will be taken to a property search screen where they can use any of the information fields available to them to find the specific piece of property they want to adjust or if they simply make sure the state, division, subdivision, and station fields are filled out they can open their entire property book to search for the item. Once a search field is filled out, or if you decide to pull the entire property book for the LEA, select Submit. Depending on what search criteria the user specified, the system will either display the individual piece of property or the entire property book for that LEA. Locate the piece of property that you would like to submit a property adjustment for and click on the requisition number highlighted in blue on the left hand side. The user is now directed to a property review page where all of the property information is summarized. Verify that all of the information displayed is correct. If it is, select submit at the bottom of the page. The user is then taken to the change of status request screen where they are required to provide the condition of the property, the LEA contact information, and the state contact information. Once all of the required property and contact information is input, the user will need to type in the DLA Disposition Services site where they would like to return the property in the explanation slash disposal instructions box. 
Once all of the required information is submitted, select Submit at the bottom of the page. The change of status request is then sent electronically to the state coordinator for review and processing and, if approved, is sent to LESO for the ultimate review and processing. If the change of status request is to turn property in to a DLA Disposition Services site, LESO will generate a turn-in document, often referred to as a 1348, that will be sent to the state coordinator to provide to the LEA. The LEA is required to get that turn-in document signed by the DLA Disposition Services site point of contact, signifying that the property was received by the site. That signed document needs to get sent back to LESO so that they can close the change of status request and complete the transaction in FETMAS. If the change of status request is to make some sort of property adjustment due to property being lost, stolen, damaged, destroyed, or consumed, the LEA will be required to submit a financial liability investigation of property loss document, often referred to as a DD-200 or FLIPL. That document needs to be submitted to their state coordinator. The DD Form 200 can be found under the Forms section on the LESO website. To complete a DD 200, the LEA is responsible for completing Blocks 1 through 11E. Be sure to include the property number that has been assigned in FEPMIS, the date the property was last certified during the latest inventory, and the name of the LEA point of contact that certified that property. Blocks 12A to 12G are to be completed by the state coordinator. After the required fields are completed by the LEA and the state, the state coordinator will send the DD200 to LESO for review and processing. If your LEA needs guidance on how to turn in LESO small arms, please contact your state coordinator for specific instructions. The LESO small arms turn-in process is complex in nature, but instructions on how to perform the turn-in function can be found in the Forms section of the LESO website. Module 5, Topic 1 Every piece of property available through the LESO program is assigned a demilitarization code, commonly referred to as a DMIL code. DMIL codes are assigned to identify the degree of physical destruction required at the end of the property's life cycle. DMIL code Q property is also assigned a numeric integrity code to further identify the types of controls placed on the items. DEMO code Q property with an integrity code of 3, written Q3, is considered controlled and is always tracked on an LEA's property book. DEMO code Q property with an integrity code of 6, written Q6, is considered general property and is no longer tracked on an LEA's property book after one year. For LESO purposes, a further breakdown of the DMIL and Integrity Codes is as follows. DMIL A and Q6 are considered general property and are tracked on the property book for one year. After being conditionally transferred for one year, the property is archived on the property book and title transfers to the LEA. Title does not transfer to a private individual or to an LEA official. Title is transferred to the LEA itself. If DMIL A or Q6 property is lost, missing, stolen, or destroyed within that first year, the LEA must report this to LESO within seven days after first attempting to locate the items. DMIL codes B, C, D, E, F, G, and Q3 
are considered controlled property. This property is always tracked and must be returned to DLA Disposition Services at the end of its usefulness. If controlled property is lost, missing, stolen, or destroyed, the LEA must report this to LESO within 24 hours. Remember, this controlled property category includes any DMIL-Q property with an integrity code of 3, so always check with your state coordinator before disposing of any LESO property. In order to receive any controlled property through the LESO program, LEAs must do the following. Certify on an annual basis and with the authorization of the relevant local governing body authority, as determined by the state coordinator, that it has adopted publicly available protocols for the appropriate use of controlled property, the supervision of such use, and the evaluation of the effectiveness of such use, including auditing and accountability policies. LEAs must also certify on an annual basis that they provide annual training to relevant personnel on the maintenance, sustainment, and appropriate use of controlled property. The following items are not available through the LESO program. Weaponized aircraft, vessels, and vehicles, firearms of 50 caliber or higher, ammunition of 50 caliber or higher, grenade launchers, camouflage uniforms, Kevlar helmets, and body armor. In summary, controlled property is always tracked on the LEA's property book. Title or ownership remains with LESO in perpetuity and will not be relinquished to the states or LEA's and the property must be returned to a DLA Disposition Services site at the end of its usefulness to the LEA. Module 5, Topic 2. Through the LESO program, eligible LEAs are able to request and receive high-profile vehicles including mine-resistant ambush protected vehicles, or MRAPs, highly mobile multi-purpose wheeled vehicles, or Humvees, armored Humvees, peacekeepers, and more. The allocation of high-profile vehicles is based on the availability of the vehicles to the LESO program, the date of the approved request from the LEA, and fair and equitable distribution. Additional factors considered include the geographic responsibility of the LEA and its location relative to high-intensity drug trafficking areas. The allocation of MRAPs and armored Humvees is limited to one vehicle per LEA. Exceptions to this policy may be allowed on a case-by-case -case basis. The allocation limit for Humvees is one vehicle per three officers. LEAs requesting an armored vehicle are required to completely fill out and submit the armored vehicle request and justification forms, which can be found in the forms section of the LESA website. The request form is used to identify the type of vehicle being requested, certify that the chief law enforcement official for the LEA concurs and approves the acquisition of the armored vehicle and to certify that the state coordinator approves the requesting LEA to receive the specified armored vehicle. The justification form is made up of eight questions that all need to be answered, is typed on official LEA letterhead and is signed by the chief law enforcement official, certifying that all of the included information is accurate and factual. On the request form, be sure to specify exactly what type of vehicle and quantity that you are requesting. There are already pre-designated columns for MRAPs, armored Humvees, and peacekeepers. Once the armored vehicle request and justification forms are completed and signed by the chief law enforcement official for that LEA, they need to be sent to the state coordinator for review and processing. 
If the LEA is requesting an MREP, there is an additional form that is required called the Demilitarization Preparation Memorandum. The Demil Prep Memo outlines the responsibilities of the LEA concerning the turn-in of the vehicle, including, but not limited to, all costs associated with demilitarization as well as the physical removal of the spall liner, fire suppression system, and armored panels. This memorandum needs to be on official LEA letterhead and must be signed and dated by the chief law enforcement official. If all request documents are approved at the state level, the forms will be sent to the Lesso Tactical Vehicle Specialist for review and processing. If approved by Lesso, the Tactical Vehicle Specialist will notify the state of the approval and the requisition process can begin. Module 5, Topic 3 LEAs that are eligible to participate in the LESO program are able to submit requests for aircraft, which are also considered controlled property. Just like with other controlled LESO property, these items cannot be sold, traded, or transferred without LESO coordination and approval. The process for requesting a LESO aircraft is similar to the process for requesting armored vehicles, in that LEAs are required to fill out request and justification forms prior to receiving an aircraft through the LESO program. The aircraft request and justification forms can also be found on the LESO website in the forms section. The aircraft forms themselves are very similar to the armored vehicle forms. LESO has noticed a trend while reviewing the controlled aircraft request and justification forms, and we would like to take a moment to highlight and emphasize the importance of a few sections from the forms. On the request form, be sure to specify exactly what type and quantity of aircraft you are requesting. There are already pre-designated columns for both rotary and fixed wing aircraft, but if your LEA is interested in a different type of controlled aircraft, you are required to list it in the other state type section. On the request form, please be sure to provide detailed information when responding to all questions. Once the controlled aircraft request and justification forms are completed and signed by the chief law enforcement official for that LEA, they need to be sent to the state coordinator for review and processing. If all request documents are approved at the state level, the forms will be sent to the LESO aircraft specialist for review and processing. If approved by LESO, the LESO aircraft specialist will notify the state of the approval and the LEA is added to the LESO aircraft waiting list. Module 5, Topic 4 In addition to all the types of general property, high-profile vehicles, and aircrafts available through the LESO program, eligible LEAs are also able to receive small arms. When a military service is preparing to access their small arms, they notify the LESO so that we can attempt to find LEAs interested in obtaining the weapons. To do so, the LESO will send a data call to the state coordinators, who in turn reach out to their LEAs and gather information concerning who is interested and how many small arms the interested LEAs would like to request. The state coordinator is responsible for confirming that the requesting LEA is eligible to receive the small arms then the information gathered by the state coordinator is provided to the LESO small arms specialists for review and processing. LESO has two small arms specialists, one for the east and one for the west regions. When an LEA is responding to a small arms data call, or if they want to submit a small arms request at any point to be placed on the waiting list for when small arms do become available, they are required to fill out the Small Arms Request and Justification Forms, which can be accessed from the Forms section of the LESO website. 
The small arms request form is much like the armored vehicle and aircraft request forms in that it is used by the LEA to specify exactly which types of small arms they would like to request through the LESO program. There are pre-designated areas to select the most common small arms that LESO issues, but if you would like to request any other type of small arm, please use the Other section. In addition to the type of small arm, always be sure to specify the quantity that is being requested. The small arms request form is then signed by the LEA's CLEO and is sent to the state coordinator for review and processing before it gets sent to the LESO level for additional review and processing. The small arms justification form is a short form of only eight questions. Among other information, LEAs are required to provide information concerning the intended purpose or use of the requested small arm, the security measures in place to reduce the potential for loss or theft, and whether or not the LEA has an issuance policy in place to maintain a chain of custody with signature for proper accountability. The small arms justification form needs to be signed by the LEA's chief law enforcement official, the state coordinator, and if applicable, the LEA's weapons point of contact or an armorer before it is ever sent to the LESO for processing. Once the request and the small arms justification form is received, the LESO small arms specialist will reconfirm that the LEAs are eligible to receive the small arms. They're not suspended from the LESO program, they're not under investigation by the Department of Justice, etc. If the LEA is eligible to receive a small arm through the LESO program, the small arms specialist will notify the state coordinator's office of the approval or denial. If the request is denied, an explanation will be provided. If the request is approved, the LESO small arms specialist will perform the screening portion of the process on behalf of the LEA in the RTD web, or the small arms specialist will work to find a transfer partner. Transfer partners are LEAs currently enrolled in the LESO program in possession of LESO small arms, but who are attempting to turn in or transfer those small arms. Before any LESO small arm can be issued out or transferred amongst eligible LEAs, the corresponding ATF form needs to be completed by the LEA and submitted to and approved by the ATF. ATF Form 10 serves as the registration form LEAs are required to register LESO small arms with the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives, the BATFE. When transferring LESO small arms to another eligible LESO agency, the ATF Form 5, which serves as the transfer form, is submitted by the LEA to the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives. Both ATF forms can be found in the Forms section on the LESO website. LEAs must retain copies of both forms for their records. These forms are considered tax documents. Therefore, the LESO is not authorized to view or receive any of the ATF forms from the LEAs. Those forms are between the LEA and the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives. For questions about the ATF forms, LEAs can either call 304-616-4500, they can fax 304-616-4501, or they can use the email address as listed on your screen. When reaching out for assistance from the ATF, the LEA must have the serial number or serial numbers of the small arms in question readily available. If an LEA is checking on the status of a form and they are told it is pending, then it is still in process per the ATF. If the LEA is told that the form is identified as a problem, they should ask for an examiner. Once an LEA receives small arms through the LESO program, 
they are required to maintain and enforce regulations designed to impose adequate security measures to mitigate the risk of loss or theft, just like with any other controlled property received through the LESO program. If the LEA issues the LESO small arms to their officers, an equipment custody receipt is required for each small arm being issued. LESO has already developed an approved equipment custody receipt for LEA use, which is available under the forms section on the LESO website. If an LEA decides to create and use their own equipment custody receipt, the following information is required. Name of the law enforcement agency, name of the officer being issued the small arm, item nomenclature or name, serial number, quantity of items issued, the printed name of the officer being issued the small arm, the signature of the officer being issued the small arm, and the date that the form was filled out and signed by the receiving officer. The responsibilities of the LEA and state coordinator involving lesso small arms that have become lost, stolen, missing, or destroyed are as follows. LEA Responsibilities Within 24 hours, the LEA must report the lost, stolen, missing, or destroyed small arm to their state coordinator and to LESO. The agency is also required to submit the change of status and fitness for the small arm within that 24-hour period. Within 72 hours, the LEA must report the lost, stolen, missing, or destroyed small arm to all appropriate state and federal agencies, including the State Police, the National Crime Information Center, and the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. Also within that 72-hour period, the LEA is required to submit an official police report detailing the events leading to the small arm being lost stolen, missing, or destroyed to their state coordinator. Lastly, within that 72-hour period, the LEA must submit the National Crime Information Center entry to their state coordinator. State Coordinator Responsibilities The state coordinator is required to forward all notifications and documents to the LESO immediately once received from the LEA. State Coordinator is also responsible for approving the change of status in FETMAS for the lost, stolen, missing, or destroyed small arm. The LESO Small Arms Specialist Responsibilities The LESO Small Arms Specialists are responsible for approving the change of status in FETMAS for the lost, stolen, missing, or destroyed small arms. This action will archive the serial number of the small arm, which means the serial number will remain searchable in FETMIS under a closed status, but will not appear on the LEA's active inventory. Also, the LESO small arms specialist is responsible for uploading the police report and NCIC entry in FETMIS under the respective line item for the lost, stolen, missing, or destroyed small arm. As a result of a lost, stolen, missing, or destroyed small arm, the LEA will be suspended from the LESO program for a minimum of 60 days in an official notification from the DLA Disposition Services Director. If a small arm that was previously reported as lost, missing, stolen, or destroyed is recovered, the following must be provided to reassign the small arm to the LEA's property book. The LEA must provide a photo of the small arm with the serial number visible, a screenshot of the NCIC clear report, and a supplemental police report referring to the recovery details. If your LEA needs guidance on how to turn in or transfer LESO small arms, please contact your state coordinator for specific instructions. The LESO small arms turn in and transfer processes are complex in nature, but instructions on how to perform both functions can be found in the forms section of the LESO website. Module 6, Topic 2. 
As outlined in the Memorandum of Agreement and State Plan of Operation, LEAs and states are required to perform a complete inventory certification on an annual basis. The property being certified consists of all controlled property issued to the LEA through the LESO program and any DMIL A general property that is still within one year from the ship date. The annual inventory requirement begins on October 1st and ends on January 31st every year. This gives the LEA four full months to physically verify and account for all of their LESO issued property. Be aware, states reserve the right to impose shorter time frames to complete the annual inventory requirement. The annual inventory certification is a highly monitored process with LESO, the state coordinator's office, and each participating LEA having their own responsibilities. The LEA shall, at a minimum, certify the accountability of all controlled property received through the LESO program by conducting a physical inventory and certifying the property in the FETMIS inventory system during the specified inventory timeframe. The LEA shall also provide all required serial numbers and photographs for identified property, upload their state plan of operation in the FETMIS inventory system, whether they have LESO property or not. The LEA shall also identify any lost, missing, stolen, or damaged property and work with their state coordinator's office to correct the discrepancies on their property book by submitting a DD-200 form. Lastly, the LEA shall, at a minimum, certify their LEA's information in FETMIS, including the CLEO's name, contact information, number of officers, etc., whether they have LESO property or not. The state shall, at a minimum, ensure LEAs complete the annual physical inventory as required, ensure LEAs provide serial numbers and photos identified in the annual inventory process for inclusion in the LESO property accounting system for all identified property, and for equipment that does not contain a serial number, such as riot control or breaching equipment, a photograph will suffice. LESO also requires serial number photos for each small arm and suppressor received through the LESO program. The state also is responsible for validating and certifying the accountability of all controlled property received through the LESO program annually with each LEA by having them conduct and certify a physical inventory. State coordinators must adhere to additional annual certification requirements as identified by the LESO. All inventories and certification statements will be maintained on file indefinitely. The LESO requires each state coordinator to submit certified inventories for their entire state by January 31st of each year. The LESO shall, at a minimum, receive and validate incoming certified inventories and reconcile inventories with the state coordinator's office, ensure LEAs validate and provide serial numbers and photos identified during the annual inventory process for inclusion in the LESO property accounting system for all high-profile vehicles, aircraft, small arms, and other unique items as required. The LESO shall also send confirmation to each state coordinator when a state's inventory is reconciled in the LESO property accounting system, FETMIS. This will serve as the state's confirmation that LESO program controlled property within his or her state has been reconciled in the accountable record. LESO shall suspend an entire state or LEA as a result of a state's or LEA's failure to properly conduct and or certify and submit certified inventories prior to January 31st and according to aforementioned requirements. To complete the annual inventory requirement in the FETMIS inventory system, the user will need to log into FETMIS, select LESO FETMIS, and then select LESO Inventory. A guide on how to perform the specific requirements for the annual inventory certification 
can be found in the Training and Instruction section of the LESO website. Module 6, Topic 1 In accordance with the Memorandum of Agreement between the Law Enforcement Support Office and the participating states, the LESO conducts a program compliance review, commonly referred to as a PCR, on each state every two years. However, LESO does reserve the right to require a PCR on a more frequent basis for any state if it is deemed necessary. The LESO PCRs are performed in order to ensure that state coordinators and all participating LEAs within the state are compliant with the terms and conditions of the LESO program. During a standard program compliance review, the LESO will review the selected LEA's LESO program files, their signed state plan of operation, and other pertinent documentation as required. Along with reviewing the LEA's LESO program files and documentation, the LESO PCR team will also select specific pieces of property from the LEA's property book to physically review and verify. The LESO PCR team will review 100% of the LESO small arms, 100% of the armored vehicles and aircraft, and a minimum of 10% of the general property assigned to the LEA. In addition to reviewing the LEA's LESO property and program files, the LESO PCR team will also examine the secure area where LESO small arms and controlled property are kept, and will discuss the LEA's small arm take-home and accountability process, including the review of any equipment custody receipts. When coordinating the program compliance review for a state, the PCR team will provide a 60-day notification to the state coordinator's office, outlining the expectations for the PCR, including which specific LEAs will be visited. At the 21-day mark, the LESO PCR team will also provide another notification to the state coordinator's office that includes the selected pieces of property from each LEA being reviewed. Once the list of specific property to be reviewed has been provided, LEA POCs should work to gather all of the selected property into one centralized location, ready for LESO PCR team review. LESO small arms and general property that have been issued to officers need to be brought in for that short period of time that the LESO PCR team will be visiting the LEA. For LESO aircraft and tactical vehicles, the LESO PCR team understands that those types of items cannot always be brought in to one centralized location for review. Any additional locations that will need to be visited by the LESO PCR team in order to physically review selected property should be coordinated with the state coordinator's office and with the LESO PCR team prior to the PCR visit taking place. It is the LESO PCR team's intent to physically review 100% of the selected property. If, for some reason, an item will not be available for review at the LEA's physical location, the LESO PCR team will take the necessary steps to physically view that property at an alternate location, even if that means driving to another part of the state. Any piece of property selected by the LESO PCR team that the LEA believes will not be available for physical review needs to be coordinated with and approved by the LESO PCR team prior to the PCR visit taking place. These program compliance reviews are considered official federal audits and should be taken very seriously as property accountability is of the highest priority to the Law Enforcement Support Office. The results of every program compliance review, whether the state is found compliant or non-compliant, is provided to the state governor's office, the state coordinator's office, and the results are made available to the community members and media outlets. If the findings from a program compliance review indicate a systemic problem regarding the state coordinator's ability to effectively manage the LESO program, the offending LEAs or the entire state may be subject to LESO program suspension.